know, when people think about climate change and wildlife, they probably think about polar bears and maybe the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, well, we can add koalas to them now. As many as 30 percent of koalas in the country's New South Wales region may have been killed. The fires continue to ravage and destroy their habitat. The reality is that these fires are not normal. We're in a war zone. So I know that there's there's been, you know, loss of human life, definitely loss of property here. But what impact has this fire had or this fire season had on uh, wildlife in Australia? Well over one billion animals are thought to have died or will soon die in the weeks and months ahead because of the current fires. That's one billion. And we've never had a toll like that on our wildlife. But it seems that every few days, the statistics get worse. I don't know where it will end by the end of this fire season. Are there specific species that are particularly being hard hit by this? Many, many animals cannot flee these big fires. Either they can't fly, they can't move quickly, they can't burrow, they burn to death. Particularly because Australia has bulldozed half of our forests, it's hard for wildlife to flee somewhere else. And that's why you find a lot of animals, um, including koalas, are wandering into people's backyards, into the streets, looking for some habitat to survive in. When they panic, they climb up a tree. And it works when the fires low down, but it's a, almost a death sentence when the fire consumes its crown fire, a canopy fire. People have talked about flames up to 200 feet in the air. That's 70 meters. I mean, that is, our trees generally don't grow that big. So any wildlife that, or birds that, or lizards that um, go to the top of the trees to escape a normal fire, they're sitting ducks, really. So I've seen a lot of particularly hard to watch videos of um, koalas, you know, bit tr basically charred from the fire. Like, are they are they going to go extinct after this? How? What's the status of the koala now, and what's going to happen to them? Our estimation is that koala numbers over the last 230 years have fallen by about 95 percent, and these fires will be inching that up towards 98, 99 percent over time. It's important to remember that this bushfire and the climate crisis is it's it has come after a couple hundred years of decimating koalas and their habitat. So for 100 years, koalas were shot for their pelts and there's records of uh, 8 million koala pelts being sold in the United States, the UK, and I think Europe up till 1930s when there was a moratorium put on shooting koalas. The term functionally extinct has been thrown around uh, in the media during these fires um, in reference to the koalas. What does that, what does functionally extinct mean? And does, is that true? The term functional extinction is used for animals where there are only tens or hundreds, not even thousands of animals left. So rhinos or animals where there's 10 or 20 left. We're not there yet for koalas. In Eastern Australia, koalas are, are listed as a, a threatened species, but at the lowest level, they're called vulnerable. We think they're now eligible to be uplisted to being an endangered species. There are solutions to these problems. Koalas and polar bears don't need to go extinct. And the term functional extinction doesn't help that. For people like me at home, like watching this heart-wrenching footage, is there anything we can do to help the situation? I think the first thing people can do around the world is to read up about what's happening in Australia, because if it's happening in our country, if it's not already happening in your country, it will be in the future of some type as the climate gets worse and worse. We need to convince people who don't care about nature or the climate, that particularly decision makers, governments, presidents, prime ministers, you have a role in helping keep these species alive. 